Oh, isn't this weather beautiful? It goes on and on. Now, if you have a look up here, can you see my butterflies? Aren't they nice? I made some butterflies to decorate my bench today and you can make some. You can hang them up inside or outside as long as it's not raining because they're only really made of paper. They're very easy to make. You're going to need some paper. I've made mine out of an old magazine, okay? So don't take paper out of a magazine unless you've asked. But mum or dad or somebody might have a magazine that you can use if you haven't got paper, okay? So, there you are. If you've got a magazine page, they're about that size and you're gonna want half of that. Okay, so I've cut mine in half. I've got about that size, all right. Now, if you know how to make a fan out of paper, you're a long way towards making these already. If you don't know how to make a fan, this is how you start. Put your paper down with an edge next to you, okay? The smaller edge. And you're gonna fold over just a little strip like that. And squash it down with your fingers, okay? Now turn this upside down and you're gonna do the same thing, okay? Fold it back. Can you see it's getting smaller? There we are. Fold it over again, turn it over. Fold it down again. Now, if you're one of those clever people who knows how to make a fan, you'll be, you will have already done this by the time I've got to the end, I think. But let's go slowly so that we show the people who don't know, okay? Squash it down, remember, always fold it over. Turn it over, I mean. There we are. Right, fold it back. Squash it down with your fingers both ways. What do we do next? Turn it over. <gasps> there it goes. Okay, fold it back and squash it down. What how many fold overs, turnovers and squash downs I'm going to do by the time I get to the end. All right, don't forget. Fold it, squash it, turn it over. Fold it, squash it, turn it over. Oh, I'm nearly at the end, look. Fold it, squash it. Oh, I've only got a little bit left, but I'll turn it over and I'll fold that bit anyway. Okay, there we are. Now, if I was making a fan, I would stick it together at one end and I would pull these bits out and I'd have a fan look. I could fan myself in the warm weather, but that's not what I'm making. I'm making, we're making butterflies, okay? So, to find the middle of your butterfly, just fold the ends together, okay? Squish it down a bit and open it back up. Right, there's the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, but you're gonna stick sellotape right round there if you've got some sellotape, okay? Now, if for some reason you don't have any sellotape, you could ask somebody if they have an elastic band, you could put it round and put it round very tightly. Sellotape is a lot easier and most people will have some sort of sticky tape in their house. So we put it there. The sellotape's gotta be long enough to go right round right round and over itself again, okay? Otherwise it won't hold it together. Doesn't look much like a butterfly, does it? Okay, so how are we gonna make it look like these? Well, we're gonna open them up as if they were fans, two fans, okay? Do they stay open? Well, not very well, until you sort of squash them down a bit, okay? Now that's opened up a lot better, hasn't it? And we're gonna do the same with the other side because he needs two wings. Right, open it right out. I'm not doing very well, let's see. Okay, squish it down a bit. So that he stays open, what do you think? I think that's quite nice. Look, and it's different on both sides because it was a page of a magazine. If you're doing this with plain paper, the best thing to do is to decorate, put some pretty colors on your paper with paint, or pens, whatever you want, before you make it. Okay, don't try and decorate it when it's like this because that would be hard wouldn't it? Now I don't need to decorate mine because mine has words and pictures of plants all over it because it came from a magazine all about flowers. So there you are, there's a bow. Now I've hung mine up, look. So if I want to hang them up to make like this, this is sort of wind mobile. If I blow, they blow around a bit, look. Well, they should do anyway. These have been blowing in the breeze out here, but now it's gone a bit stiller in the garden. They're not doing very much. Now, 
If I want to hang it up, I need some thread. Got some thread. Okay. Um, how long a piece do I want? Oh, fairly long bit. Okay. Okay. So you can ask if you can have a piece of thread. Or a piece of string would do, but thread is good because it's light and these will move around nicely if there's a bit of breeze. So we're going to stick this on. And a bit more tape. Okay, I don't need so big a bit this time, so I'm going to cut my piece in half. All right. Now, hold it like this. I think you need to come a bit closer because it's hard to see what I'm doing. Okay. Put your thread right across the middle like that but only put your sellotape halfway across. Do you see what I mean? You don't want the sellotape to stick the thread down right across. You want it to leave it so it can come up in the middle. You might need a little bit of help with this if you're younger, but you can get a big brother or sister to help you or whoever's looking after you. Right? There, now that hangs. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hang quite straight because it's a butterfly. It's flying. And so it's not going to be just a straight thing. It's got a bit of movement to it, look. And then I'm going to hang it up. See if I can hang this one. I need to pinch a bit of blue tack off one of the other ones. But you could make a loop and you could hang it on a branch of a tree if you were having like a little tea party outside and you wanted to make it look pretty. Or you could hang it up inside somewhere if someone let you. Okay, oh look. There's more wind happening. Look at them moving. Pretty, aren't they? Here's one that I did something else with, though. Probably this would appeal more to the girls. See here, I have a hair clip. I'll show you what I've done. Look, I've taken the bent end and I've just slipped that in underneath the sellotape. So there you are. And then you can put that in your hair. It won't last very long because it's only made of paper. But you could dress yourselves up for a party with it. If you don't really want to wear a bow in your hair but if you'd like to wear it somewhere perhaps someone would help you somehow to stick it you could put it on a shirt it could be a bow tie you have fun with them I think they look nice hanging up don't you I might put some thread on this one as well because I don't think I really want to wear this in my hair you have fun doing those but just for now we're gonna have singing okay up on your feet Let's have some actions to warm everybody up and get everybody going. How about floating, sailing, swimming, flying? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? Have a good old shout. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. You ready? Ready with your shout? See if I can hear it from my house. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. That's true. My God is so big, so strong, and You know, we sang Fishes of Men. Well, we're going to sing Fishes of Men again this week because we almost always do sing it at Kids Club because it's the little one's favourite. Ready with your fishing rods.
here's a favourite for me, one of my favourites. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Okay, so everybody running on this spot, except me. I can't run on my spot and play the guitar. Anyway, you can't see them, but I'm wearing Wellington boots. The name of the for this week's story. Can you guess what Bible story we're going to do? Because we're going to sing Peter and John. stories of some people who knew Jesus and who followed Jesus and how their lives changed. Last week we looked at Nicodemus and we saw that at first he was scared and he didn't even he wasn't even brave enough to go by daytime to speak to Jesus in case someone saw him. But later on we saw how brave he was. Now I gave you a strong hint didn't I when we did the singing what story we we're going to do today. Peter and John. And you know that story. That song is very good. It tells us the whole story, really. We're just going to fill it out a bit. But first of all, we're going to go back and remember something that happened to Peter just before Jesus was killed on the cross. You might remember this story too. It's a very sad one. And I'm sure that Peter was sad when he looked back and remembered what he'd done. And we're like that as well. There's some things we look back at and we oh, I wish I hadn't said that, that was wrong. I wish I hadn't thought that about that person. So let's just see what happened to Peter. Peter had liked to sound very brave and he thought he was very brave. When Jesus had said that all his friends were going to run off and leave him, Peter said, not me, not me, Lord, I'm going to stick around. I will stay with you whatever happens. And Jesus said to him, Peter, even before the cock crawl goes, cock a doodle doo in the morning, you're going to say three times, I don't know Jesus. Okay. Not just run off and hide, but say to people, no, no, I don't know Jesus. Well, you know, that's what happened. It was when Jesus had been taken to the high priest's court. And Peter was wanting to find out what happened. He wanted to stick with Jesus. He'd said he would. So he went along and he was in the outside courtyard while Jesus was being questioned. There was a fire there because I suppose it was cold. It was in the middle of the night and people were warming themselves by the fire. And Peter stood there. After a while, a girl who was standing nearby looked at Peter and she said, 
Aren't you one of Jesus' friends? Aren't you one of his followers? Well, here was a chance for Peter to say yes, and Jesus is worth following. But he didn't. He said, no. I don't know him. I don't... I'm nothing to do with him. You're wrong. He was there for quite a long time, waiting. Quite a while later, someone else said, Surely you are a friend of this man. Surely you are. And someone else said, Yeah, we know you must be because you come from the same part of Israel. You've got the same sort of accent. You're from Galilee as well. Surely you're one of his followers. And both times, Peter said, No. I don't know what you're talking about. I have nothing to do with this man. So he'd said it three times. And just after the third time, he heard the cockerel crowing. Morning was coming. And he knew that Jesus had been right. Jesus had, had warned him this is what he'd do, and he'd done it. Oh, how awful he must have felt. Now, that's a very sad story about Peter. But we know that after Jesus had died on the cross and risen again from the dead, Peter met Jesus alive again. And Jesus gave him a chance to sort of put that right. Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I do love you. Lord, I do love you. Lord, you know that I do. And Jesus said, then you take care of my people. And that's what Peter did. He took care of the other disciples. He, he was brave. He stood up in front of people and told them all about Jesus and what Jesus had done for them. That Jesus had died on the cross so their sins could be forgiven. He was a brave man. God gave him that boldness, that, that willingness to stand up there and be brave for Jesus. Now, let's get to the story that we know. Peter and his friend John were going up to the temple to pray. And when they got to the temple gate that was called the beautiful gate there was a man he was lying on the ground he was taken there every day to lie on the ground because he couldn't work his his legs his feet and ankles didn't work properly they never had he'd been like that ever since he was born and the only way he could get money for food and clothing was to ask people please would you spare me some money he asked for alms. Alms is money that you give to people who need it. And there he was. And we know what happened, don't we? You know what happened. Peter said, look at us. And the man looked up, hopeful. Here's somebody who perhaps is going to put some money, perhaps more money than usual, in my hands. But Peter said, I don't have any money. I don't have any silver or gold but I do have something to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Go on, think, what happened? You know what happened. The man got up, his feet and ankles were made strong, just like that. Who did it? Not Peter, Jesus did it. That's what Peter said after he said, it wasn't me, it was Jesus. It was because he trusted in Jesus' name. So the man got up. He wasn't struggling to stand up, like someone who's perhaps just been healed or just had an operation. He was walking. He was leaping. You've got to have strong feet to leap, haven't you? And he was praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God, he followed Peter and John into the temple area. Well, you may not know what happened after that. Just after that, Peter spoke to all the people who were gathered around. Lots of people came, hurrying over. They saw this man. Hey, that's the man. For 40 years or so, that man has been outside the temple. Everybody knew him. But now he's walking and leaping and he's praising God and saying, God, God made me well. Jesus Christ of Nazareth made me well. And so loads of people gathered and Peter spoke to them. He said, it's not me who's made him well, it's Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, who you and the other people in Jerusalem handed over to the Romans to be killed. Peter said, you did this.
because you didn't understand. But now, listen and understand. And repent. That means, what does that mean? Turn away from doing things that are wrong. Repent. Turn to God. Okay, so it's like turning away from your way. Turn around the other way, turn to God. So that your sins can be wiped out. See, Peter wasn't afraid anymore. He wasn't afraid to talk straight, was he? Perhaps some people would be very cross to be told if they had any sins, that they were sinners. But Peter wasn't scared. God made him brave. All sorts of things happened to Peter after that. Not long after he and John were locked up for the night. Afterwards, they spoke to some of the religious leaders and the leaders of the Jews. And they were told, stop talking about this Jesus. Stop telling people about Jesus. And Peter said, well, God has told us to tell people about Jesus. Who should we obey, you or God? Well, they couldn't really argue with that, could they? You have to obey God. If someone tells you to do something and God says no, then you don't do it. If someone tries to stop you and God says, do it, then you have to do it, don't you? Because God's in charge. So you see, Peter was very different. Nicodemus started off scared. In the end, we can see he was brave. Peter, he thought he was brave. But when it came to it, he let Jesus down very, very badly. But then, Jesus made him brave. And we see such a change in these two people. Now here's the memory verse that we're going to do today. Oh, I've got it upside down. Okay, can you see that? Can you read it? Okay, in case you can't read it, we'll read it together. Repent. We said that word at the top, repent, meant to turn from doing what you want to doing what God wants. To be sorry for the things you've done wrong and to turn away from them. And turn to God. Okay, instead of going your way, go God's way. Instead of doing what you want, do what God wants. So that your sins, oh, this is the thing that people don't like being told. Maybe a lot of the people listening to Peter didn't like being told, but some did. It tells us in the Bible that a lot of people believed from what Peter told them that day after they'd seen the man healed. Okay. So that your sins may be wiped out. Now, I've written this in pen. I can't get a cloth and wipe that out. And you know, we're sinners and we do things wrong and there's nothing we can do to wipe that out. We can't pretend that we've never done them because God knows, okay? But there is a way to have them wiped out and it's this, repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. So that's brilliant news, isn't it? I can't get rid of my sin. You can't get rid of your sin, but God can get rid of yours and mine. If we do this, repent and turn to him. Okay, now this memory verse is going to be at the bottom of this week's quiz sheet. So here's the quiz sheet for this week. Have fun. So we're just going to do a quick game of Captain's Coming. Now the rules for this game are as follows. Captain's Coming! Aye aye sir! What else do we do? Climb the rigging, right, climb up. Um, haul on the ropes, pull those ropes, come on. Swab the decks, you've got a mop in your hand. Right, cleaning the deck of the ship, swab the decks. Um, bombs overhead, oh no! Cover your head, crouch down. Um, shark attack. Now I'm not going to do shark attack right here outside my garage on the ground because I'm going to get very dirty but you lie down and you put one knee up and hold it don't you? That's the fin of the shark. See if I can remember any others. Robert, any other things we do in Captain's Coming? Oh, port and star. But now this is going to be difficult because you're looking at me. Okay, do you know which is your right hand? Put your right hand up, put my right hand up. 
No good putting up the one over this side because yours is over that side, okay? Now, that's called starboard on a ship, okay? All right, so with that out of the way, we are going to get started, okay? So, captain's coming. Shark attack. Climb the rigging. Port. Starboard. Port. Climb the rigging. Okay? You got all that? Perfect. Right, so, that's gonna get, we're going to get a little bit faster, get you a little bit warmed up with this. Um, port. Port. Starboard. Shark attack. Climb the rigging. Captain's coming. Swab the decks. Swab the decks. Climb the rigging. Captain's coming. Okay? Getting a little bit faster, and captain's coming, swab the decks, shark attack, swab the decks, shark attack, climb the rigging, swab, swab the decks, climb the rigging, port, port, starboard, starboard, port. Shark attack, swab the decks, climb the rigging, captain's coming, port, starboard, captain's coming, port, port, shark attack. Alright, so I'm just going to leave you there for now, because I don't want to be doing this for the rest of the day, but you can be doing this for the rest of the day, you can carry on with your... You know, your parents, your, your brothers and sisters and did you have a good time with that but we'll see you next week